You're watching the Seafood News Weekly video brought to you by the latest issue of Ernerberry's Reporter Magazine. The summer 2021 issue is out now and jam-packed with great insights from Ernerberry's team of market reporters. Get your copy by visiting ernerberry.com reporter. I'm Ernerberry market reporter Lauren Castiglione. And I'm Ernerberry staff writer Ryan Doyle. In our top story, Nordic Aquafarms received the final permit needed to become the first large-scale land-based RAS project in the New England area. The company obtained the Army Corps of Engineers permit and can move forward with the final stages of engineering and construction in Belfast, Maine. Nordic Aquafarms noted that there are a few appeals still remaining over some permits it has acquired, but believe they will be moving forward soon. In other news, James Aaron Stevens of Kodiak was sentenced last Friday to six months in federal prison, a $1 million fine, 126 days in a halfway house, and 80 hours of community service. Stevens, the owner and captain of the fishing vessel Alaskan Star and fishing vessel Southern Seas, pled guilty to one count of false labeling on August 21st, 2020. Taken together, the halibut and sablefish that Stevens falsely reported had an approximate dock value of $4.5 million and a market value of $13.6 million. Over the course of 26 fishing trips spanning four fishing seasons from 2014 to 2017, Stevens lied about where he harvested the 900,000 pounds of individual fishing quota for halibut and sablefish. Meanwhile, Brazil-based meatpacking giant JBS has agreed to purchase Australian salmon firm Huon Aquaculture for $425 million Australian dollars. The board at Huon Aquaculture unanimously recommended the move to sell to the world's largest meat producer, who will now set foot in the seafood industry. Huon is the second largest salmon producer in Australia, with its operations based in Tasmania. JBS said it expects the transaction to be completed by year's end following required court, regulatory, and human shareholder approval. And finally, a Rutgers University study said that cell-based and cell-cultured are the proper terms for seafood products made from the cells of fish or shellfish. In the study, 1,200 consumers evaluated packaging labeled with cell-based or cell-cultured seafood. Participants reported slightly more positive overall impressions slightly greater interest in tasting, and slightly greater likelihood of purchasing the products labeled as cell-based seafood than those labeled as cell-cultured seafood. William Hallman, a Rutgers professor who led the study, said that both names work well, but the key is to choose a single term and get everyone on board to reduce confusion. And that's the guacamole. Subscribe to our channel below and be sure to head over to seafoodnews.com or visit the Seafood tab in Comtel for a comprehensive look at the latest market and industry news. And don't forget to listen to a new episode of the Seafood News podcast released on Spotify, SoundCloud, and iTunes every week. Thanks for watching.